introduce Mike, Mike Malloy in a moment. And we have a couple of uh, people who are going to share information with us, and that'll take us through the evening. First, uh, I, uh, Brian had introduced me to, uh, to Mike Malloy here, who is a uh, uh, bootstrapping a company that he wants to tell you about. And he and I had spent some time talking in my office, and the thing that intrigued me was he's not looking to go to investors. He's looking to uh, just bootstrap this, and yet he's giving uh, what I think is fair to say constant elevator pitches. And so I wanted to have him come in and talk to you about the elevator pitches and, and some about his business and how he's going forward with that. And so what I'm going to do is uh, just turn it over to him. He's going to talk to you. Uh, Brian's going to be recording this and, uh, you know, for him, so we could agree to do that, so we could have this as a takeaway. And of course, we'll add you know, Mike's name to the, the list that we publish of people who do guest lectures at Georgetown University. We publish that twice a year in the Wall Street Journal, and we'll, we'll add that name to it. So we please give him a, a warm welcome. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Mike Malloy. I'm going to start with passing out these sheets for you guys. Uh, Basically on this sheet is just a sample elevator pitch that I give uh, for Wayborn, my sunglass company. And just pass that back there. Uh, so basically some background on myself. I uh, grew up in Annapolis, Maryland. I went to Boston College for undergrad. Graduated in 2008 with a degree in mathematics and computer science. Um, got a job right out of college at Deloitte Consulting, right over the bridge in Roslyn. So I worked there for four years doing technology consulting for the FDIC. Um, it was a good gig, I learned a lot. Uh, everything I learned about business, I actually learned from Deloitte. I didn't take any business classes in undergrad, so it was pretty good to get on the job training in that regard. Um, about two and a half years ago, I started a master's in computer science program here at Georgetown. Um, I'd always known that I wanted to eventually get a master's degree, and I figured, well, I was living with a med student at Georgetown, I was 23 and single, and that was a pretty good time to get out of the way. Uh, it also helped that I had some eligibility to play college ultimate frisbee with Bryant and some of the other guys here at Georgetown. Um, so last summer, I uh, got a random email from Thrillist.com about a new sunglass company called Waveborn. And uh, I said, oh, this looks pretty cool. I was a lifeguard, I like sunglasses, I'll check it out. Uh, so I went to the website, and it turns out that for every pair of sunglasses they sell, they donate eyeglasses to eye clinics in less fortunate parts of the world. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. So I, I bought a pair right away, there's a Get Involved link, and I uh, emailed the guy and said, hey, this sounds really cool, like, how can I help do, how can I spread your mission, I want to get involved. Turns out he lived in DuPont, uh, so we met uh, the next week for beers, uh, over there, hired me on the spot as a second employee in the company. So that's kind of how I got involved with my first startup business. Uh, not exactly, I didn't go, wake up that morning saying, hey, I really want to start a business, but that's kind of how things played out. Uh, about a year and a half later, I've been working for Wayborn. Um, as of May, I graduated from Georgetown with my master's in June. I quit, quit Deloitte, moved to the beach, and lived in Dewey Beach, Delaware all summer selling sunglasses. And now I'm back in DC running Wayborn full time. I have another startup company that I'll tell you more about later. Uh, so one of the main reasons that I wanted to come here and talk to you guys was about elevator pitches. And I think there may be some confusion about how often do you use them? Are they only important when I'm talking to a VC? Like when exactly are you giving these pitches? Um, as someone who's been running my own business for about a year and a half now, I give this Wayborn pitch almost every single day, usually seven to 10 to 15 to 20 times a day. I'll meet a cute girl at the bar or whatever, and they'll say, hey, like, what do you do? And they're like, oh, are you a consultant for government? Oh, do you do audit? What do you... Actually, no, sorry, I own my own social goods sunglass company. And then boom, immediately I have their attention. They're, they are very drawn into this. This is not the standard DC networking happy hour response that most people expect. <coughs> it's like, oh, wait, really? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the company's called Wayborn. For every pair of sunglasses we sell, we donate eyeglasses to eye clinics in less fortunate parts of the world. Sunglasses are handcrafted in Italy, very durable, Lifestyle shades. More importantly than the sunglasses, we are giving the gift of sight to people in less fortunate parts of the world. We partner with a nonprofit, Unite for Sight. It's basically like the Peace Corps for eye clinics. So people sign up for a year, two years, out of college in their 20s, and they go abroad to places like Ghana, Honduras, India, and they build these eye clinics in these rural villages. So people come in, they've never had an eye exam in their life, and they're like, oh, you're blind, you need like four times magnifying eyeglasses. So they take a pair off the shelves, give them those eyeglasses for free, and then we stock those shelves with our sunglass sales. It's that simple, that's our business model. We are trying to do good in the world while running a business for profit to make some money, but understanding that business isn't just about how much money you bring in, but also how much good are you doing in the world, like a triple bottom line, looking to really incorporate that social good component into our business. And we sell sunglasses through the story. 
Like, I don't necessarily sell these sunglasses because they're this new style of sunglasses that nobody's ever seen. I mean, classic Wayfair style. You can probably buy these at the boardwalk for 10 bucks. They're not as high quality, but it gets the point across. What we're selling is a story. And the reason the business is doing so well is because people love that story. You perk up and like, oh, wow, there's a whole mission behind it. It's not just another Ray-Ban or Oakley or whatever else. People, that really resonates with people. And another thing that resonates is that once they buy the pair of sunglasses, and then they go out to a party, and somebody asks them, hey, where'd you get that sun pair of sunglasses? They now have a whole story to tell beyond the product. And it's pretty cool to be able to talk to a friend and be like, oh, it's this great new company, Wayborn, blah, 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 blah. By building those brand evangelists, it's a great opportunity for us to spread our mission. And as, you, as uh, Professor mentioned, we're bootstrapping. We're not looking for investors. We're not trying to make millions of dollars. We're slowly and incrementally growing the business. Um, primarily through reaching out to brand ambassadors on college campuses around the country. We've got a couple here at Georgetown, uh, one of the BC at Maryland, a few other schools, and basically this fall we're looking to, to branch out and find more people who want to spread that mission. Um, so as far as elevator pitches are concerned, that's what it's like. It's that 30 second to a minute pitch that I just gave, but I give that almost every time somebody asks me what I do. Um, and I think it's important to realize that being confident in that presentation and practicing that, like that was very smooth. I've done this thousands of times. Like this is kind of what I do. I give this spiel and it makes sense. Um, and for people who are now just starting your own businesses or your own ideas, it's important that you practice giving that pitch to people. Give it to your roommate. Give it to somebody you're having lunch with. Hey, what, do you, what part are you working on in school? Give them two minutes, tell them what you're doing. And if you stumble over parts, see what parts aren't as clear with the delivery and then go home and practice those to make it a better pitch. Um, I think one of the best things you can do is to start with your internal network of friends and family, people who support you and want you to do well in these projects and these new businesses, and maybe they're a little nervous about you becoming an entrepreneur. I know um, my parents certainly were not pleased when I called them on Friday and said, hey, Mom and Dad, by the way, I quit my job this morning. That was one of the less friendly conversations we'd had, but then we talked through it and I explained, hey, I've been doing this for a year, I'm confident that this is what I want to be doing, kind of tired working for the man, wearing a shirt and tie every day to work, sitting in a cube. I want to go out and run a business and be passionate and share that passion with others. Um, so as an entrepreneur, one of the great things about it is the ability to give back to other entrepreneurs, which is kind of why I kind of leaped at the opportunity to come in and talk with you guys today, because it's pretty cool to hear what projects you guys are working on and how my advice can kind of help you to grow your companies and service offerings in that way. Um, so real quick, do you guys have any questions right now about elevator pitches or what I mentioned about Wayborn? Anything like that? I kind of want to make this a little bit of an interactive discussion to, to keep people awake. Yeah? Uh, is it always supposed to be like right at 30 seconds? Uh, no. So that's one thing. It doesn't have to just be 30 seconds. Oh, 35 seconds, you've gone too long. You can, as you start talking, you can see how receptive the people you're talking to are. And if they're really kind of leaning in, listening, yeah, maybe give them a little bit more detail. But if you can tell they're kind of already working at their cell phone or want to be going somewhere else, wrap it up and keep it brief. But if people are engaged, there's no reason 30 seconds can't turn into a minute or two or maybe a five or 10 minute conversation if they're hypothetically a really good lead from somebody who wants to buy a pair of sunglasses or whatever it is that you're pitching. Yeah. I guess it's different because sunglasses apply to everyone, but how do you change your pitch up depending on who you talk to like on the go? Yeah, so again, I think that deals with kind of understanding your audience and who you're talking to. Like I certainly have a different tone of voice when I pitch to um, like a 50 year old man versus a 25 year old girl. There's a little bit more kick charisma that goes into the second pitch, whereas the first one it's a lot more business oriented and saying, hey, this is, this is our profit margins and that's the thing. Whereas uh, when I talk to women about it, they're more interested in the social good component and giving more details about Unite for Sight. Whereas businesses or other people with their own businesses are like, well, well how much you get at wholesale? Like, what's the markup? That sort of thing. So, Understanding that different audiences want to know different aspects of your company. The wages, guys. So this seems like quality is like a Ray Ban. You mentioned that like is a little bit better than what you get on a boardwalk. Yeah. If you're charging eighty-five dollars, are they good quality glasses? Do they last? How long they, do you have those pairs? They are very, they're very high quality glasses. I've probably been wearing these pair for somewhere about three or four months. I have a lot of them, so I kind of yeah. alternate them. Yeah. Um, but that's the nice thing. They are designed in Italy, like. One of our differentiators is that these aren't the crappy sunglasses that you can break and lose all the time. Uh -huh. uh, like my literally part of my pitch is to go like that and not even care because I know they're not going to break. And they didn't break, which is good. That wouldn't be the group pitch. Uh, but no, they're, they're lifestyle sunglasses. And what I say is like I'm 26. I'm an entrepreneur. 
I don't buy products that can't handle my lifestyle. So if I can't jump off a roof, throw it in a pool, have it get run over by a car, and not work, then it's probably not for me. The car thing may have been a bad example right there. <laughs> but, but in general, my life is on the go. I'm constantly traveling, and I want things that can keep up with that pace in my life. So I think that helps me to be able to sell them, because yeah, they are, they are better than your average pair of sunglasses. Um, and the thing, before I actually got involved with Waveborn, about four years ago, I, I got an email about a company called StunnerOfTheMonth.com. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of this. It's literally the coolest thing ever. So for $9 a month, um, they mail you a random pair of stunner shades to your house in any color, shape, style, design. It comes with a little business card with a cool name and a little description about how awesome they are and what you can do like James Bond when you wear these sunglasses. It's phenomenal. Uh, that's kind of what ignited my passion for sunglasses. And I was like, 9 bucks a month. It's like Christmas, the 15th of every month. I get this new present. Um, you notice that pitch I just gave, I've been getting that pitch for four years. Like when I would meet buddies at Frisbee tournaments, I would say, hey, you love crazy sunglasses, check out this website. I probably have 20 or 30 friends who signed up just because I was so excited about their product and, this, and the way they provided it. And like one month I got like a slap <coughs> bracelet that said time to stunt and had a picture of a watch on it. Like that sort of stuff was pretty cool to me. Um, so through that, I kind of learned what it's like to develop uh, a strong following of people about your business who are passionate and want to do word of mouth marketing, which um, is huge in today's connected society. Everybody comments on Facebook and Twitter about whether or not they like something, or, um, hey, this thing is great, you should totally buy it, I'm going to share this, or their service sucks at Comcast, I hate them, I can't believe my cable's out again. I think everybody knows Comcast sucks. But um, it's important to understand that instead of spending like $2 million on a commercial at the Super Bowl, all you need to do is get people to use your product, like your product, and then want to tell their friends about your product. <coughs> Like if this is something when they go to a happy hour or a party or whatever that people are talking about, and this is one of the first stories they want to share with their friends and they say, how was your week? Oh, I got this new pair of sunglasses. It's really awesome. Let me tell you about it. That's, that's a success. You know, that, like, that's how we are building our business. And I think it's completely different than the way a lot of older businesses were built before the internet was around and, and that sort of thing. And I think it's important as you guys start developing your business models and how it is that you want to network and bring in new customers or at least potential leads, Understanding that having people talk positively about your company when you're not around is huge. To that point, a lot of times when I'm out, I'll be out with a few of my friends, with their friends, uh, and my friends all know that I have a sunglass company. They've heard the pitch before they know what it is. People ask what I do. A lot of times I'll defer to one of my friends, and I like to hear them explain what it is that I do. Like, how do they describe the sunglasses company? What are the key parts in that pitch that resonate with them? Like a lot of times people don't know exactly what Unite for Sight does, like, oh, the glasses are great, and then they, they do a donation thing, but I don't really know how it works, but they're, they're helping people, but I'm not really sure. So that, that tells me, that's kind of feedback for me, hey, the next time I give that pitch, I really need to hone in on Unite for Sight, Ghana, Honduras, India. If you look on the, the piece of paper I gave you, there's a mnem mnemonic right there, G-H-I, three letters in a row, those three countries, easy for me to remember, easy for me to teach people to remember, uh, You've got Ghana in Africa, Honduras in South America, and India in India. Um, it covers a large part of the world. Um, and it, it resonates with a lot of different people um, based on whatever their ethnic background is. You're saying, hey, somebody around you, hopefully, we're helping. Um, so I think that's another way. As you, you give your pitch, and you get used to giving it, listen to how other people repeat it, and what are the key things they take away from it. Um, does anybody have any questions about that sort of stuff? You know, one of the key things is that you know you're working with um, you know with, with with this kind of uh, event when you're starting up your own business. You, you you tend to talk about it a lot, and if you don't have an elevator pitch to talk about your your business and what it is you're doing, whether it's study abroad, whether it's UV car, or whether you know whether you're looking to bankroll, you know, and, and so the idea is that you need to be able to talk about you know the, the situation at a drop of a hat to a number of different. And you get better and better at it as you as you continue to do that. You find out what are the essential things that, that you need to teach in you know about the thirty second to two minutes pitch you know, that helps people understand you know <coughs> what you're doing and, and maybe even asking for what uh, you know uh, what, what you know how they can get involved or, or get connected or I was going to ask do you do you ever sell uh, pairs of sunglasses you know in, in these kinds of situations does that happen? 
Uh, yeah, so like actually, so I lived in Dew Beach, Delaware for the summer, and uh, I had just worked for four straight years. I just spent two and a half years in grad school, so part of it was a vacation of sorts, but part of it was also, hey, I have a sunglass company, the best place to sell it's at the beach. Um, and I would go out most nights, I'd go to the bar, I'd meet some people, I would talk to a cute girl, and I'd say, oh yeah, I run my own sunglass company, like, here's my business card, I'd give her the whole pitch, we'd talk for a while, she would shoot me a text the next day and say, hey, we're hanging out on the beach, um, by the Starbird, come swing by, we'd love to buy two pairs of sunglasses, and I would go and hand deliver them, and then hang out with a couple cute girls on the beach for the afternoon, um, and then I would take a picture of them in the sunglasses, and I would post them on Facebook, and I would tell them that they are now sunglass models. Um, it's a pretty good business model in general for <laughs> selling sunglasses. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure everybody here can adapt that. that yes. Particular <laughs> no, we, we take the point. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and part of it is too is just building those relationships. And maybe the person you meet at the bar or at the event or wherever you are doesn't necessarily buy your product, but at least now they know it exists. And then when they're talking to somebody, Maybe the next week their friend's sunglasses breaks. They're like, oh, hey, I got a great sunglass company. You should check it out because now they know what's going on. Um, but it certainly was good this summer, too. I was literally a traveling salesman. Like, <coughs> I had a travel bag that I kept in the trunk of my car with sunglasses and fanny packs in it. And I would go around, and if anybody wanted to buy one, I'd be like, oh, yeah, let me just run out to my car. What color do you want? Try it on. Like, I went to Verizon to get like a mobile internet hotspot because the internet at the beach was terrible. I ended up giving the guy there a free pair of sunglasses because he took $75 off of my bill. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, I will certainly do that business transaction. Um, so that was actually pretty cool. And understanding that you, if you have a product or a service you can offer, a lot of times you can barter with people. All prices aren't really fixed. Like, yeah, we sell them for 85. We always have some sort of discount. We're always trying to do a promotion. And if you have friends who want to buy them and you want to buy more than one pair, yeah, send me an email. We can set up some sort of bulk discount. And understanding that the same is true for every other business. I found the more time I spend as an entrepreneur and think about how I want to run my business, it completely changes how I look at other people's businesses try, to try to understand how their systems are connected on the back end and what I can do, not necessarily to manipulate it, but to use that to my advantage. Um, like I know the DC parking ticket system isn't very well connected with the MBA, with, who is very well connected with people who know when your car was last inspected. Maybe I haven't done that in like seven months, but nobody's noticed, which is okay. And I, I think that's an advantage you get as you start thinking in an entrepreneurial mindset and understanding how all sorts of different business models operate. You can take bits and pieces from different business models and incorporate them all together into how you're running your business. Yeah. My questions are kind of more to like to wait for, but sure. how many sales have you guys sold, and do you have any like in-store presence at all, or is it all just like salesmen yeah. online? Sure. So, company started last year. We have sold about 550 sunglasses, um, primarily almost all through our online website. Uh, we have two retail stores that we sell at. Uh, one is in Annapolis, Harbor Court. It's a women's boutique, and then they have a second store down in Charleston, South Carolina that also sells them. Um, we are very interested in having a larger retail presence. Our big issue was that last year, uh, so stores typically buy their summer inventory in January and February, which we didn't really know this was our first year at a sunglass company. Um, and I was busy working again my master's last January, and the founder was getting his MBA at Maryland, so we were both kind of in school and didn't have the time, effort, the energy to really reach out to all these retail stores to make these large bulk sales, which brings in the revenue and allows us also to uh, order more from our distributor in Italy. So the goal for the next several months, uh, this fall I'm working on the brand ambassador program primarily, reaching out to get people on campuses, uh, promoting us. And then actually after New Year's, I'm heading out to California for two months to uh, live with some friends out there and go up and down the coast hitting up surf shops. Um, so it's a lot easier to sell sunglasses in California in the winter than it is to sell <coughs> Um It's also a good excuse for me to be where it's sunny. Uh, that's one of the, the best things too that I love about Wayborn and life as an entrepreneur is that it's about lifestyle design. Like we're not making millions of dollars selling sunglasses. Uh, we've sold, I said 550, we've got about 25 or 30 left in stock that we're trying to sell before we re-up from our distributor in Italy. But it, it allows you to incorporate lifestyle design into your life, which I think isn't something that all entrepreneurs really think of in the beginning. Uh, but now that I have my own sunglass company, I can go anywhere in the world that it's sunny and call it a business trip. And that's a pretty great sentence to be able to say and for me to be able to rationalize why I went to New Orleans three weeks ago to hang out with friends. That oh, was a business trip. I, it was sunny down there. It was fine. Like, I'm going to Sarasota next week for a three-day national ultimate frisbee tournament. But it's a business trip because I'm also going to sell sunglasses when I'm down there. And I think if you look at it as what, what do you want to be doing with your life, where do you want to live, 
Do you want to travel? Who do you want to surround yourselves with? How can you design your business to allow you to incorporate those elements into your life? It's huge. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that kind of convinced me that I didn't want to work at Deloitte anymore and I didn't want to work in a cube for the man and I wanted to be able to go and do what I want to do when I want to do it. But knowing that I am very passionate and hardworking and I can accomplish my goals if I work at them, but I don't need to be told exactly how I need to get that route, which is for me what being an entrepreneur is about. Sure. Uh, yeah, so circling back to the whole concept of ele elevator pitches, which is what I want to teach you guys about tonight. The way from one I said is well defined. I've done it a thousand times. Um, I don't know, with the professor two weeks ago, I think I gave him the pitch for Punch Rock. It's probably the fifth time I'd ever given it. And it was kind of all over the place. It didn't really have a central theme. And as I was talking, I was kind of understanding the business model that we're still trying to build. Um, so it's been a couple weeks. I'd like to think it's gotten, gotten better over uh, the past couple weeks and the people I've talked to. But so basically, I started another company called Punch Rock. And what we're doing is we're building a collaborative community for social entrepreneurs in the DC area. Uh, basically, we have a shared office space in Adams Morgan. Um, it's right at the foot of where our, uh, all the bars are, uh, 18th and Wyoming. It's a great area. We've got one large office, uh, a second medium-sized office with a kitchen, a bathroom with a shower, full services, um, and another third we call it the game room for just hanging out and having fun. And basically what we want to do is build a community of like-minded individuals in the D.C. area who either have already started their own business or want to start their own business and incorporate some sort of social good component into it. So as I mentioned, with Waveborn, uh, the donations through Unite for Sight is core to our business. So that's what we're about. And we want to work with other companies uh, with similar business models who have that triple bottom line, who, yeah, they want to grow their own business, they want to design their lifestyle, they want to make money, but they also want to be helping people. And when you surround yourselves with people who want to do that as a business, it also means they probably like sharing with each other, and we want to teach each other and learn from one another. And it provides me the opportunity to share, uh, excuse me, share all of my experiences from Wayborn with everyone else that we're bringing into this community. So literally today, for the first time, we opened our doors. We had uh, two people come in this afternoon and check it out. We've got four friends coming in tomorrow night to do a hackathon prep session there. We've got another guy recording a webcast uh, there tomorrow night. Two other friends um, who are going to be just working from the space tomorrow. And then I've got a couple of people coming in on Wednesday to check it out. I've got lunch on Thursday with another Georgetown Computer Science alum who just started his own company, who's hopefully going to start working with us. And it's, it's an exciting time for me as an entrepreneur to say, yes, Wayborn is awesome and I love what I've been doing, but I also looked at my bank statement and realized that financially this isn't going to really pay for my rent and everything for the next six months. What do I want to do? What am I passionate about? And I found that teaching other entrepreneurs from my experiences and also building a community that collaborates, works together, plays together, shares knowledge, and isn't just these little siloed projects working on side by side, but you don't have any idea what everybody else is doing, and you're reinventing the wheel over and over and over again, uh, to take that away, and to change the way that business is done. And I think it's very difficult in DC with a lot of government agencies. There's a lot of red tape, and people don't share, and people have meetings, they don't tell you they have meetings, and there's politics and all that. I kind of want to take a step away from that, and then build a whole new, community where people come in and they work, but they'll tell you what they're working on. They will show you what their prototype is. They will tell you the rationale behind why they designed their business model this way. They will connect you with any other friends they have who um, are doing similar things. Like Before I came over here, I met with one of my old professors, Cal, in the computer science department, and I told him what I was doing. He's like, oh, that's great. Like, I have a friend who's trying to do something similar. They're just a spaceship. And I was like, oh, you mean Hub DC? Yeah, I met with them on Friday. And he's like, oh, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted to connect you with. And I was like, well, I love that you wanted to connect me with them. He's like, well, I love that you're already connected, you know? And that's kind of what we want to do is just have people connect with one another, uh, people in different industries, people with different skill sets, different backgrounds, and different networks. The more people we have working together and collaborating, the easier it is to get business done. And especially if you're bootstrapping as an entrepreneur, there's 150 million different things you need to be doing, and you can only do one, <coughs> three, two, or three at a time. If you don't have a team that you trust to do the other things, it's a lot easier, instead of spending eight hours trying to figure out how to set up your website, Find somebody who's a website guy who can do it in 20 minutes. You know, maybe, maybe I give him a fanny pack, maybe um, I help him with something he needs the next time something comes up. And, and that's a big part of our mentality at Punch Rock, is the give before you get. So you're giving out help, you're helping other people, other businesses, without asking anything back in return. Um, and by doing that, one, it adds a, a whole new altruistic uh, atmosphere to the work environment. And, and it also says, 
Um, it also says that helping others is important, one, in the business model of the business we're running, but also in the way that we interact with our potential c customers and clients, and in general, just changing the cold-heartedness that I think is, is too often prevalent in business, which is not something that I enjoy being a part of. Um, so I'm really excited, literally today is our first day, uh, for what contractors can achieve, and for the next like four or five months, we're basically building out uh, a variety of different services as we bring in new clients. Hey, what can we do to help your business? What do you need help with? All right, let's try it. Oh, wow, we just fell miserably at that. All right, well, we're not going to do that one again, but maybe let's try another technique. And then this one works pretty good, and let's just tweak two things so that we do it for the third time for a new client. Hey, this is now a thing we do. Uh, like a week ago, I would have never mentioned, hey, come to our office and do a hackathon prep session. I don't even really know what a hackathon is, to be honest. But my friend Tyler from Deloitte, He's doing a hackathon with a few friends at the end of the month. I was like, hey, I want to come check out your space. Let me bring my friends. We're going to prep for a few hours for a hackathon. I was like, awesome. And now part of my pitch is, oh, yeah, we do hackathon training sessions. Yeah, come in with your team. You just prep here. Cool, nonchalant. This is the thing we do. And one of the nice things as an entrepreneur is every time you do something new and it's successful, you can now say, oh, this is the thing we do. You know? Um, and I think that's pretty cool. And I also think it's great for Punch Rock as we build this out and we figure out how we can most help these small businesses. Uh, we're just constantly developing new services and also uh, helping the businesses to, when they do something new, make some sort of reusable template so that you can share it with another company who needs to do the same thing. Um, like, it took me a while to get our new brand ambassadors and interns set up with their email addresses. And I was like, this really shouldn't be that hard. But then I sat down for an hour, I made myself a new email address, I took screenshots of every single step through the process, posted it all on the wiki, and said, hey guys, here's how you set up your new email address. Took me an hour, and now everybody within 10 minutes of getting their email saying their ad, email address is active, can go in, set it up so it forwards your Gmail, you can respond through your Gmail, you can set up your signature and all that stuff. Um, but it's the idea of making these templates that you can share with other people and not necessarily being worried about, oh, I can't believe that other company is looking at my how to set up your Wayborn email <coughs> template. Like, no, if you guys are using Gmail for your email, yeah, just do the same thing. It's really easy. Here's how you do it. Um, and we're optimistic that the community we're building will be based on that sort of shared knowledge uh, principle. So that wasn't exactly an elevator pitch, that was more of a spiel, if you will. Uh, I think it's a technical term. But that's, that's kind of what I'm now trying to do. Um, and it helps that I've been doing Wayborn for every year and I have a background as an entrepreneur, so it builds people's trust in what I'm saying um, and will hopefully help recruit more people to join our community. Any questions? What's up? Um, what's the business model for Punch Rock? Sure. Um, so, for the next six months, if we, this is our soft launch is today. We have a goal to have a hard launch when we have our services defined in the spring. There's a lot more things that we can charge money for. Right now, our base asset is space. There's a lot of entrepreneurs, small businesses in the area who either work from home or work for coffee shops and don't really have any space. And not only that, but we're working there. You ever had comes in, you're not really talking to anybody. There's no collaboration. What we want to do is fill our office space. We can, I think we can fit up to like 20 people there at a time. Look, we want people in the office. Like, I hate when it's me and Roxy there, the two of us. Yeah, we're getting a lot done, we're being productive, but I want friends and I want their friends, people coming in and doing business. So we have three different subscription packages. We have a part-time membership, which is $350 a month for up to 20 hours a week. Um, and what that provides you with is uh, the availability to use the space. We're open from 8 a.m. till 2 a.m. every day. Um, and so, the part-time membership is designed primarily for people who still have a full-time job. It's paying their paychecks um, so they can afford to do this. And maybe they don't come in from 9 to 5, but the question that I like to ask people is, what do you do from 7 at night to 2 in the morning? I was like, that's when great ideas are built. That's when you put in the hard work. Yeah, you already worked 8 hours a day. That's fine. You're not going to be the best by working 8 hours a day. Okay, if I can work full-time and go to grad school and start my own business and play ultimate, you can certainly find time to come into our office, put in those four to six hours a night, and really build this. You know, skip happy hour for two months. You'll save money, uh, not spending money at the bar every night, and you'll get to build a business that will hopefully be something that can transform your life. Um, the second membership is a full-time membership for people who are committed to running their businesses, probably either have some VC funding or at least enough money that they, they are comfortable <coughs> doing. Um, that's $600 a month, and you get access up to 40 hours a week. We also have speaker series and events that you get for free, and we have uh, room rentals, so we rent out the rooms if you want to host an event there, either speaker or a meeting. We have like a flat screen TV or a projector, whatever you need. Um, Full-time members get 50% off their room rental rates, 
And then the top package is the Awesome Time membership. And that's for people who really are buying into what we're selling, want to be a part of this community. Not only do they want to run their business from there, but they also want to help grow Punch Rock and recruit, bring people in. And right now there's three of us running it with a few other friends helping out in their spare time. Like, we are actively looking for people to come in and build all these things. Like As I mentioned, when you're running a business, there's a hundred different things to do. Having more awesome time people around who say, oh, you know what, let me just take the lead on doing all the scheduling for the next month. I'll build out something. Uh, don't worry about it, I've got it covered. And then knowing, yeah, they really want to be here, they're going to put in the work. I can trust them to do that is great. Um, and they also get uh, like free, free room rentals anytime you want to host an event. Um, and we also have like personalized cubbies, kind of like kindergarten. So you can come in and bring your stuff, your toys, or your change of clothes if you want to work out in the morning. We have a shower in there, towels you can use, and then get changed into whatever you want to work in. Um, one of the nice things too about Punch Rock that I enjoy is there's no dress code. Um, I typically wear Birkenstocks and Frisbee clothes to work every day. And I usually wear a headband for the first three hours of the day to train my hair to go back. And when we have important meetings, I stand up and I play with the Frisbee in the air because that's kind of how I think the best. And I'm also kind of just practicing stretching and getting better at Frisbee. Uh, and that's how I do business. Uh, it's not conventional and we're not really telling people you need to do things a certain way. We're saying, how do you like to learn? How do you like to work? And how can we incorporate those all together as friends who are, are doing some pretty cool stuff? Uh, any other questions, guys? When you just stress the importance of collaboration, have you talked to Worley Park at all? I think they do something similar, but it's just glasses. So like when you buy a pair of glasses, they give a pair of glasses. Have you guys worked with them or talked to them? No, I What was the name? I might not double check. I can check at the break, but I think it's Worley called... Parker. Or, oh, Warby Parker? Yeah. Yeah, we are, yeah we're familiar with Warby Parker. Um, it's the same business model. Uh, Tom's also does it, mm -hmm. and there's a couple others out there who are kind of following suit for this buy one, give one, uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the other things, too, that I like about social entrepreneurship is I don't think it's like Pepsi versus Coke, like, oh, you bought Warby Parker sunglasses, <coughs> you can never look at Wade and you're going to hate each other. It's more, oh, wow, they had that marketing campaign? That looks like a great idea. We should do something similar. And we, we like to look at what our competitors are doing, but not necessarily... Um, be nervous about the sales, they're bringing whatever, but say, hey, how can we incorporate those parts of their business model into what we're doing and learning from one another rather than slander and like political campaigns saying the other person said whatever else. Like that's not at all how I think business should be done. Um, so it is cool to see other companies doing things and like look at their Facebook and Twitter and how are they using social media and that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah. Any other questions about anything at this point? So, go ahead, go. Oh, okay, I was going to say, so like looking at your elevator pitch, I see you have a couple tools that you use. You have like one or two similes, you have your mnemonic, and then you have your action. Like what other tools do you have to use when you build out your elevator pitch that you try to incorporate to make the ideas easier for you to remember and for other people to understand? Yeah. Um, I would say one, understanding how you memorize things for tests like is a good way to understand how you can memorize an elevator pitch, like what those components are. And the other thing I would say is, I like the mnemonic that I use. I think using hand signals or even like touching somebody and like, you, whether you touch their hand or you say, hey, like here, try this on, you know, and like put it on their face, engaging them so people don't get kind of sleepy and aren't really paying attention to what you're saying. Um, if you want to incorporate a question or two in there, like I don't think I said, said it when I gave it to you guys, but I typically say, oh, like, do you know Tom's shoes? And 90% of people are like, oh yeah, yeah I know Tom's. And now they're, they're participating in the conversation. It's not just you spitting information at them for 30 seconds or two minutes straight. Um, so if you're developing a product or a service that solves some problem, think about starting off your pitch with asking them if they have that problem, you know? Um, like if you have like shoe inserts, you can ask people like, hey, do your feet hurt after a long day at the office? Oh, you should try these shoe inserts or something like that. Um, finding ways to understand what the customer's needs are, what their, their problems are, and then how does your product or service answer that. Um, and that should be at the basis of what you're pitching and, and how you're going to sell them on that. Um, and another thing too, so about elevator pitches, we talked about Waveform, we talked a little bit about Punch Rock. I also want you guys to think about it in terms of your whole life is really a pitch. Like every time you're talking to somebody, you're constantly selling something, whether it's um, Selling a pro like actually selling sunglasses or like the Sunday actually I was at the Ravens game I spent three hours at the tailgates selling T-shirts. I have a buddy whose dad's a graphic designer, uh, has his own printing company, so we went and sold T-shirts for a Ravens game. Like I've never done that before. That was brand new for me, 
but quite frankly, I could use the money, and as a little Sunday morning hustle, I said, yeah, I can do this, like, let's go around and see how it goes. And it was very, very interesting for me as a salesman who does pretty good selling <coughs> my sunglasses, completely new environment, how, what do these people want, how do, how do I, one, carry around 50 t-shirts, which is really heavy, how do I hold them up, who do I approach, um, and I got some tips from my buddy Brian about, hey, try to make eye contact or call somebody out, um, and he also said, like, target women, they're more likely to buy than men are, or at least that sort of thing, and around the the, the market I found best was going up to a group of majority Ravens fans with uh, one or two Cowboys fans with them, and I would call it the Cowboys fan because the shirt had like a Tony Romo with a bullseye on his forehead and like a mustache. And I was like, hey guys, I got a great shirt for you right here. And I would try to sell it to the Cowboys fan, and then they would get real pissed off, like, oh man, get out, what are you doing? But then their friends would be like, yo, that's pretty funny, man, let me get one of those shirts. You know what I mean? Whereas when I would just walk up to Ravens fans, be like, hey guys, put a bullseye on Romo, 15 bucks, long sleeve, black, purple t shirt, what do you want? didn't really resonate as well as starting that by engaging somebody, getting a little bit of a rebuttal, and then getting their friends on my side. And uh, it led to some good conversations, and um, too, it was good haggling too. Of, yeah, we want to sell for 15, but oh, it's half an hour before game time. All right, I'll sell you for 10, or five and a beer, you know? Uh, and just figuring out how to get used to that really quick pitch, and literally just walking for three hours straight through tailgates, trying to find people who want to buy a product. Um, so we made a couple hundred bucks, it was good. But uh, definitely learned a lot from that about how to approach people, just not cold calling, but best showing up to random strangers saying, hey, I have this, do you want to buy it? And then politely walking away and also dealing with the fact that 90% of the time you're going to get rejected. Uh, a lot of people don't want to buy t-shirts or maybe they already bought a different t-shirt or maybe there's a security guard so you should just kind of go this way. Um, but yes, yeah, so it was definitely a good experience for me. And I think going back to pitches, uh, Understanding that all aspects of your life are pitch, which is kind of what I want to keep coming back to as the key point. Um, you're constantly selling something, whether it's why somebody should go out on a date with you, why someone should join, join the Frisbee team, why someone should want to go to this concert with you, why someone should give up their Saturday morning to help you move into your new house. Like it, it's all of these things, understanding that it's incentive-based, and it's also what sort of political capital do you have with the target audience. How many nice things have you done for them that now, hey, they feel inclined to reciprocate because you helped them move in <coughs> months ago. Hey, now I need help. All right, yeah, I'll come over. Um, and this goes back to the philosophy of punch rock of give before you get. And I think that's a great way, if you want to build uh, your ability to sell to people and to constantly be pitching and to have it be well received, uh, the best way is to start off by just helping people with what they need. And it's really that simple to just provide them uh, whatever service or good you have or whatever things they need help with, just say, yeah, I can do that. You know, take it on, spend a half an hour, an hour doing whatever it is they need help with, and if you have enough people lined up in your back pocket who owe you a favor, eventually when you need help with things or when you have a new product and you want to invite people to join your community, all of the people you've been helping or teaching Frisbee with the past several months, they're going to learn, uh, or they're going to want to help you. And I think that's a great way to make the elevator pitch more effective is to have already built some, some sort of rapport with the people you're talking with. Um, I don't know if anybody have any questions about that. But also, as uh, Ann Bozo was talking about a uh, company and planning to stay in the area, and maybe after you leave here looking for a space to park, or a space where you need <coughs> to meet somebody uh, for you know, a, a more professional meeting, Opportunities like this. This is you know, an interesting, interesting version that we're looking at. Allowing people to collaborate. All, all doing the same sort of thing, much the way that we're doing the same sort of thing in this class, even though it's a different project. We're collaborating. Other questions for Mike? Can we give a hand? So I brought in a case full of fanny packs for you guys. Uh, along with sunglasses, I also found at the beach this summer that people tend to lose their belongings. And if you tie their belongings to them in a nice wayborne fanny pack, it's much easier. And boom, it's free product placement right on their hip. So uh, I have like 20 of these if you guys. I have one for everybody. I'll just pass them around. Take whatever color you want. Each one um, also has a sticker in there. Um, as well as my business card, if you guys want to get in touch with me, I'd be happy to talk to you about whatever product you're working on. Um, and as we're growing Punch Rock too, um, 
Uh, I'm happy to have any of you guys come into the office just for free. Anytime you want to come in and work, see what we're doing, uh, network with the people in our community. We're, we're actively looking for um, some work study interns, people to be doing work. And as we grow out our offerings, uh, one of the things we want to do is build a bench of resources to then subcontract, basically like freelance, like whatever your skills are, anybody who is a member in our community, they have access to this whole bench. You can set your bill rate, maybe as college student it's 10 bucks or zero if you just want to work for free and, and build uh, more experience for your resume. But it's a great way to get connected and also hopefully make some money for you guys on the side and see what it's like to work with other startups. Uh, does everybody get a fanny pack? I have more if we need them. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks again for uh, letting me come in today. This was kind of my first time giving one of these talks, so I hope it went pretty well for you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to taking a look at that video and see how the presentation